In modern day, a lot of conveniences work on the concept of out of sight, out of mind. Many processes today are done almost invisibly. We have pipes to deliver us water, machines to clean our dishes and to cook our food. You can click a button and a company can deliver you a product. One of the best examples of out of sight, out of mind is how we deal with trash. Simply take an unwanted item, throw it away, and it's someone else's problem. Consumers created 292.4 million tons of waste in 2018, which is obviously a large amount. But all that municipal waste is only 3% of all garbage produced. The rest is industrial waste produced by companies. 7.6 billion tons of trash come from product manufacturing, food production, textile mills, printing, and others. Only 94 million tons are recycled or composted. The rest goes into landfills. With such a huge disparity between companies and consumers, it seems impossible for individuals to make things better. But when determined people work together, they can make a difference. When you have an item you no longer want, you have a few options. A, you just throw it away. But as we've already established, that's not very good for anyone. So then we have option B, just keep it anyway. But that's not very good for yourself. Option C is giving it to a thrift store. These are good, but not perfect. There's a very small chance that the thrift store will actually display your item, and an even smaller chance that it ends up in the hands of someone who needs it. And with those stores jacking up prices, items get stuck on shelves for longer and longer. Option D is to cut out the middleman and give to people directly. But before we explore where we are in the present, we have to find out how we got here by looking at the past. When humans first started settling into communities, we didn't have much garbage. Everything was used and very little was wasted. Tools and other items made of metal, stone, and wood were passed down, used for generations. The Greeks were among the first to create and regulate waste dumping. They made large holes in the ground to act as dumps, and the city of Athens made a law requiring waste to be at least one mile away from the city. More regulations were documented in the Middle Ages, but the real race for waste management began in the Industrial Revolution. Trash started to build up rapidly in cities as populations and production grew. Quality of life ran down as people were slow to catch up with this new problem. Public works projects began in major cities in the UK in the 1840s, regulating houses to deposit trash and cleaning streets. The large amounts of trash collected led to the invention of trash incinerator plants, which at the time were called destructors. The first iteration of dump trucks were just horse-drawn carts with open beds. In the early 20th century, motorized trucks with enclosed compartments became standard. Technically, these advancements were part of the second industrial revolution, part of the greater industrial revolution, where we began to use gas, oil, and electricity. These were the key ingredients to creating the phenomenon that we all know of today, mass production. Our trash production has tripled since the 60s. People produce trash, companies produce trash, and manufacturers produce trash. We buy, consume, and throw away in a continuous, unrelenting cycle while building up a huge problem for future generations to deal with. We created a mountain, and now there is a snowball rolling down, ever growing in size. And one day, that snowball will crash and cause a huge avalanche in its wake. Every day, we see more news about the sad state of the climate, pollution, and the world in general. It's getting harder to ignore that inevitable feeling that something bad is going to happen. But some people are willing to do something about that feeling. Protesting for better production standards, creating movements, encouraging people to reduce their carbon footprint, calling out companies for their lack of accountability, and forming organizations like Buy Nothing. The Buy Nothing organization encourages people to rely less on consumerism and capitalism by using communities to give and receive unwanted items. Instead of throwing away something you don't need anymore, you can give it to someone else. And instead of buying something you need, you can receive it from someone else who's passing it on instead of them throwing it away. The Buy Nothing Project is a community-based alternative to thrift stores, started in 2013 and currently has 6.5 million members across 7,000 communities, preventing thousands of items from being thrown into landfills. People can participate in the movement with an app or with dedicated Facebook groups. These groups are often localized to a city suburb or split into sections. 
Joining the group that includes your address makes it easy to give where you live. Joining a group and participating is easy, but it's also pretty easy to help out if you want to get more involved. Helping run or start a new group is a great way to support your community. Megan Tischler is an administrator for a Buy Nothing group and has been running a page for members of Brooklyn Park for two years. Paul Bouch has been a member of Buy Nothing groups and participating in them since 2017. Both Paul and Megan were willing to share their experience and how the groups work. I first heard about Buy Nothing Project through Emily, my former admin. She had posted to bullet a bulletin board community group uh, for Brooklyn Park looking for someone to volunteer to help start create this Buy Nothing Project within our community. She heard about Buy Nothing from a podcast that she had recently heard and was intrigued. She looked and we, she found out that Brooklyn Park had no no buy nothing project so she wanted to get one started and was looking for somebody to help her do that i tend to spend three to four hours i would say during a week running the group so this includes admitting new members doing some admin posts like tip tuesday or wish wednesday our thankful thursday posts and other just general reminders i also spend some time reviewing our members posts just making sure that they're following uh, our guidelines and then also um, making my own posts offering up my own items as gifts or creating my own asks and gratitudes uh, i like to use buy nothing instead of thrift stores because i like to have I, I want to feel that the item I'm giving away has is going to somebody who, who values it. So I feel like there's a connection with that individual that I know that it's going to be put to good use rather than going to like a thrift store, like a Goodwill, where I don't know if they're going to actually put it out on the shelf and someone will buy it or if they just throw it away. So I like knowing that there is that it's going to be utilized. Uh, how my experience has been, I would say it's been very positive. I, I really enjoy you know, giving those items of value to someone and, and knowing that it's going to be put to good use. Uh, overall, the experience is positive and, and good, and um, it's good for the community. It's good for the environment. And um, it's good that I know that I'm a bit of a cheapskate, so I know that that item is being put to good use. Uh, so Buy Nothing Project works through a Facebook group. And our members are um, able to post in three different types of ways. So we ask for posts to be formatted in terms of a give, an ask, or a gratitude. Um, the first one is a give. So you might be gifting something that you no longer need that is within your household. I look at something that I have around the house, something that I haven't used in a while, something that's taking up space, something that I just don't feel a need for any longer, and then I evaluate, do I want to give this away? Do I want to sell it? Do I want to bring it to goodwill? and that I feel there may be another individual out there who could utilize it in my community, then I decide to post it on the Buy Nothing group uh, within Facebook. I take a photo of the item, then I make a posting on the Buy Nothing group with a short description, um, a general area of where we are so people know how far they may have to go to pick up said item. Uh, and then also there's some sensitivities to uh, smoke or for pet dander. So we'll also note that we're a non-smoking home that do allow pets. So in case if it's something like an item with fabric, there may be some pet dander involved in it. Once I've posted it, then individuals in the community can express their interest in that item. And after maybe 24 hours is what we usually give it, uh, we select an individual from that group and uh, I'll let them know that they were chosen and then have them contact us to arrange pickup. The second one is an ask post. So our members are encouraged to ask for anything that they might be interested in or might need. They can ask for items, uh, clothes, they can ask for tools, they could ask for, maybe they just need a cup of flour and they don't have that, but they can ask for that. Or they can ask for somebody's talent. So maybe they have a zipper that's broken on a jacket. So they could ask if anybody has a talent that might they might be able to gift in order to fix their, fix their jacket. So it, 
Members can ask for anything. No ask is too large or too small, and it can be anything under the sun. Uh, the third type of post is a gratitude post. So we really want our members to show gratitude towards one another in terms of what they've received or just in maybe meeting another person or just experiencing building community within our, within our group. So showing gratitude towards others is something that we really want to promote within our community. Some of the most popular items are definitely items that have to do with kids, specifically kids clothes or kids toys that, you know, some kids just may not even get to in their short lifetime of this size. So it is nice that I see a lot of kids stuff getting passed throughout, passed around throughout the group. Cause I know that that stuff can be very expensive if bought new. A lot of other things that I see tend to see is leftover food items. This might be from parties or just extra from a recipe, or maybe somebody overbought something that they don't didn't expect didn't end up needing uh, with within their weekend or their or their recipe. So then they can give that stuff away. The other one that I tend to see a lot, and I saw one today, was party balloons. And this is when you buy an art or you buy some kind of like happy birthday balloon, but you know you only need it for one party, and maybe some. Somebody else has another party that they can go that they can utilize it for we had happy birthday balloons getting passed around for a few months and i think four or five different people got to utilize it including myself uh, my biggest surprise comes when it's something that i'm posting that i feel would be a very popular item and not very many people uh, post their interest in it uh, and vice versa somewhat something that i think is not going to be as 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 a hot item uh, is blowing up and there's seven, eight, ten people that are interested in that one item. Some of the hiccups that I've had uh, have only tended to be around responses from other members, uh, members who are interested in the item that I'm giving away. Uh, as an example, um, something that I've posted, perhaps an individual says they're interested, I select them, but they, they don't contact me. Uh, then perhaps that same person or, or another individual on another posting, they contact me, but then don't make plans to come and pick it up or then eventually don't pick it up. So that I would say is, is the worst of the hiccups and, and annoyances with the program. This has changed since I was a kid in that I feel there's a lot more people that are cognizant of what can be recycled and what can't. And also people are making different choices on what they're purchasing based on that. They know that an item that may have a lot more packaging that they will have to dispose of either through recycling or garbage. Um, they make different choices, I think, sometimes on what they decide. And so they may use something like the buy nothing to get the item they need without the packaging. The biggest thing that I want to promote in my community is just kindness and trust towards others. Um, I really appreciate my community and I like my neighbors and I like being a good neighbor. I want people to remember that the people in this Buy Nothing Project group, these are the people that you grocery shop with, that you stop at red lights with, that you ride the bus with, that maybe your children go to the same school as your neighbor's children. You know, these are the people that you're passing on the walking paths and you're playing at the same park. So if we're all just trusting and kind to one another. We can do those things all at these places to one, to one another. If you are someone looking to make a difference in the world, the Buy Nothing Project is a great place to start. You benefit your environment, you benefit your community, you benefit the future, and you benefit yourself. Giving the gift of support to your neighbor is the first step in making our society a more positive place. So consider joining your local group of Buy Nothing so that you too can fight pollution by building communities.